Well, thank you, Arpit, and um, good afternoon. Uh, it, it's really great to be here, especially in sunny, warm California, um, right here in Los Angeles. And it's really great because I think the future of open networking is really sunny and bright. And uh, it's exciting to be here with you today. So I'm going to be a little bit uh, less adventurous than Arpit. I'm not going to do a demo or anything. I'm not even going to have slides for you. I'm just going to talk about what we're doing at AT&T about 5G. And also a recent announcement we just made the last couple days about some pretty uh, amazing new things that we're doing that really to prove the power of disaggregation and open. And so ONS has always been a pivotal moment each year for AT&T. Um, you know, for the last several years, ONS has always been the mark of new milestones for us on this journey to disaggregation and opening of our networks. And now with the 5G era upon us and all this new connected applications that will come with it, this whole mission of, is more critical ever than before. And we have a really great plan for 5G, and I hope you'll find it just ex as exciting as I do. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the background of that. Um, let me walk you through how far we've come over the last few years with ONS at the center of this. And this is really important. Um, if we rewind back to 2014 at ONS, when we were back up in Northern California, um, we, we laid out a vision for a virtualized and software-defined network. The next year, in 2015, at ONS, we outlined how we were bringing virtualization to bear on what became AT&T Fiber, and that was with our GPON OLTs. And we explained how open source was at the center of our overall network transformation strategy. Since then, we have broadened and accelerated our work with ONF, OCP, ONAP, and the whole Linux Foundation family. And today, we are in a position to turn the vision of open wireline and wireless access platforms into reality. Then in 2016 at ONS, we unveiled eComp, and we asked the developer community for feedback if we should really release this into open source. And the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. It was tremendous. Now today, eComp is a foundational pillar of ONAP, which has been adopted by mobile operators representing over 60% of global mobile subscribers. And that's pretty phenomenal. And that's happened really a testament to the great work of the Linux Foundation and our pit and team of really pushing, uh, getting the ONAP vision out there and we're seeing just tremendous uh, progress there. And we see just the beginning, it's really just the beginning of a whole new frontier. And then at last year at ONS 2017, we announced our first live trial of a white box switch carrying customer traffic. And this was really a big first for us at AT&T. So why are we pushing so hard on this path? Because the critical role in accelerating demands of our networks really require this. Every year, we talk about this exploding traffic trends on our wireless network. The latest is that we're now seeing roughly 200 petabytes of data across our wireless network on a typical business day. If you remember last year, I gave this stat it was about 137 petabytes. It's almost a 50% increase just in 12 months. Pretty, pretty phenomenal. And you know, we kind of stopped doing the math on how many libraries of Congress that actually equals, just because the numbers were just getting too ridiculous. But we don't see uh, any end here in sight, at least in the near term. And we all have a pretty good idea of where this new demands are coming from, right? Streaming video. AR, VR, gaming, we all know it's about more and more network demand. And that demand is only going to accelerate as 5G comes online. 
We've said we'll launch our mobile 5G network in a dozen cities before the end of this year, the first US carrier to do so, and we're pretty proud of this. So just like we were first with smartphones back in 2007, AT&T will be at the forefront of the next evolution of wireless data demand. And if we're gonna be first, we're gonna have to be ready. So last year, I gave you a brief overview of one way we're looking to meet that demand, which was by testing white box routers, switches, and other equipment running open software. The goal was to see if there was a way to rethink the model of how we build and manage access networks. The trial was a great success, but we weren't yet sure if it could be scaled for full production. Well, we've learned a lot over the last year. And I'm, today I'm excited to tell you that we are ready to move forward with taking white box into our mobile packet network. In the latter part of this year, we'll be ramping up into 2019 and beyond. We plan to deploy over 60,000 white box routers in our macro and small cell mobile infrastructure. These machines will be at the core of our 5G build. This will be an open hardware design. We will make these specs available to the community later this year so anyone can build this hardware. We already have a handful of these boxes carrying live customer traffic today. Soon we'll have a lot more. This year will be a transition that will take place over a few years, but we think it's the future. It's flexible, scalable, upgradable, and very, very cost effective. But that's not all. As important as the hardware is, we all know that the software is the future of our network and not the closed proprietary systems we've all been stuck with over the years, we need a much more open and collaborative development model. And we think we've got just the right thing. On these white box machines, we are going to be running software that we created. We call it the disaggregated network operating system. You heard our pit talk about it. There's been some announcements already. We call it Danos. We're not very, uh, creative with our naming, right? If you're our New Jersey team, we call it Danos. But Danos is really, uh, we think, going to be revolutionary for providers. Admittedly, we think that this model is so exciting. We think there's an opportunity for service providers at all scales to adopt it. Because we're not just using Danos, we're releasing it into open source. We're working with the Linux Foundation to turn this into an open project, as you heard, and we expect to see the first public code available in the second half of this year. This is really exciting. This is a huge milestone for us. Not just an open hardware reference design we'll put out there, but we're also gonna put that software out there as well. This is not just a network operating system that handles the needs of the data center, this NOS handles carrier-grade protocols, alarms, automation, and operational needs of any scale communication service provider, large or small. Now, we've had some great help from many. I want to call out the Open Networking Foundation and many others. We also got a boost from the technology and expertise we acquired when we bought the uh, Viata platform last year, a really amazing and a talented team that we're happy to be part of the AT&T family. We now have a cutting edge platform that can adapt and grow and help all of you, the open source community. Now I wanna take a step back and make sure you understand the overall framework we're creating and sharing with the open source community. Because we're not aware of any other operator out there that's doing as much at this scale. Danos is a big part of it, but it's more than that. We were major contributors to ONAP, the Open Network Automation Platform, which was announced at, again, last year's conference. ONAP is a comprehensive framework for real-time policy-driven software automation for virtual network functions. 
Think of it as an operating system for the entire network. DANOS is the operating system for the individual white box machines that make up the network. And there are other, uh, two other major software platforms we've recently announced. Acumos, our AI platform for making AI apps reusable and easily accessible to any developer. And then also we, we, we announced Acrano. And this is a software stack to improve the state of edge cloud infrastructures for carrier providers and IoT networks. All of this is going into open source. So open source has become such a critical element of our network transformation strategy, we call all of this net, our network AI approach, network artificial intelligence. You make the network smarter by turning it into software, injecting AI into it, and then opening up to the developer community. And we think this is really, really powerful. So this is a really pivotal year for AT&T and our industry as 5G starts to redefine what connectivity means and network applications will look like in the future. As wireless connection speeds start to be measured in hundreds of megabits and even gigabits per second, and we see latencies begin to drop into the single digit millisecond range, I believe we're gonna see a range of use cases we can't even imagine right now. Whether it's edge computing, smart cities and IoT, super high res streaming video, or something else entirely new, that we know the world is eager to see what 5G can do. And frankly, all we can do is make sure we have networks that are adaptable, that are ready for whatever developers, businesses, or consumers want to throw at it. White box hardware powered by open source software is really how we make this happen. We're excited to get started on this transition and I'm really delighted I got to share this news with you today. I wanna to first of all thank you for everything you're doing on this amazing journey with us. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and I'll be around later this evening if you've got questions. And uh, again, thank you for all that you do. Have a great conference.